Well, good morning, church. Great to see you in the house of the Lord today. Come on, are you glad to be in God's house this morning? Amen. Amen. You can feel the humidity in the room. You know, that's because the baptistry is, uh, is heated up and uh, ready to go. We're going to have an exciting service this morning. You showed up for New Life Sunday. And so what that means is today is going to be a celebration of the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. Fred, great to see you back, man. And praise God, he's a healer. Blake, good to see you, brother. And God's doing so many great things in the life of our church, and oftentimes we can come in and we can kind of sit right near somebody and, and not even know what God's doing. So this is one of those Sundays that we like to shine a big spotlight on what God's doing in the life of the church. So I said it once already, but I'm going to say it again. It's New Life Celebration. So we're going to give you permission to get a little loud sometimes. Amen? Amen. It's football season, so this shouldn't come hard for a lot of you guys. Today and girls, that's right. Hey, we, got, we, do, we do have some crazy fans up here, some lady fans up here. <laughs> well, the natives are restless now, I can tell. Well, today, here's what I want to challenge you to do. I want to challenge you to open your heart to receive the words that are being spoken today by those that are getting baptized. Open your heart to the power of the gospel being presented through somebody else's life. Because the Bible says this, the Bible says we overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. And so there's power in a testimony. Now, uh, I'm sure most of you saw on the way in, things are looking pretty messy outside. We're, uh, we're in the middle of renovation, and uh, I told Pastor Chris this week, I said, uh, the timing of this is just perfect. Of all Sundays, it's New Life Sunday, and our church has never looked quite as bad as it looks right now on the outside. But I have been in three delivery rooms in my 21 years of marriage. And can I tell you, new life is messy sometimes. So, you know, the church is moving forward. God is good. Thank you for your patience coming and going today as, uh, as we are definitely in a construction zone. But I want to invite you to stand. We're going to pray and we're going to just worship. We're going to celebrate all that God's doing today. Father, thank you so much for your presence this morning that we sense in this place. God, as uh, we celebrate with those who are stepping into the waters of baptism in a few moments, God, we celebrate our own story, that God, you brought us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. God, we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for the work that you are doing, the work that you desire to do in the hearts and lives of every person here today. So Lord, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said amen. amen. Come on, let's bless him today. Hallelujah. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I met you, I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb. Till I met you. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into Come on, now your freedom is all that I know. Behold. 
We're going to get ready to celebrate in water baptism. And uh, for those of you that have been a part of this with us before, um, you know what is about to happen. For those that have never been a part of a water baptism service, let me just share with you that, you know, the scripture speaks in Romans chapter 8 about how when we are baptized, we are buried with Christ in baptism. We go under the water signifying the death of our old life, the death of our old nature. The Bible says we are raised to new life in Christ Jesus. And so this morning as we celebrate today, it's an outward demonstration and it's an outward declaration of each of these people as to what God has done in their life in saving them. Their old is gone. They've become new in Christ Jesus. And so today we're going to celebrate. The first person that's uh, coming to join me in the water is JT. Uh, why don't you come join me? Hi, my name is John Thomas Gill. Most people call me JT, and I'm here to get baptized today. My earliest memory is living on a DuPont farm, and uh, back then, life was good until it wasn't. There was a lot of um, moving around from home to home, um, a lot of struggles and arguments and fights, and some points of homelessness even and all the way up through my teenage years there was a lot of hurt and pain struggles resentments and anger that i had built up inside of me and when i was a teenager i turned to drugs and alcohol to try to keep all the pain and anger and things outside i couldn't hardly face the world at some times, but I had believed in God, but I feel like I couldn't let God into my heart and soul because I was constantly running around and running hard. And after running around all those years, 
I was involved in an accident and it landed me into the hospital. I had a lot of people praying over me in the hospital and I really feel like at that time that God came into my life and I was allowing God to come into my heart and I started being led on a different path and it led me to a, a support group. It led me to this church, which I'm very thankful for. After you know, going to the support group for a while and coming to this church, life started to get better. So I choose to get baps, baptized now because something my mom always told me was that after all these accidents and crazy things that I would do that God is saving you for something, JT. And today, I feel like that time is now that I can live a different life. Today I would like to thank Pastor Chris for his guidance and, and his help and for teaching me new things. I would also like to thank my daughter who is an angel here on this earth. I would like to thank my wife who is stuck beside me through everything thick and thin and who has just showed me unconditional love. My name is JT, and I've decided to follow Jesus. JT, because of your profession of faith today in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Next, we have Jim and Carol Martin coming to join me. God, I'm so grateful for what God is doing in this couple's life. I'm so grateful that he brought them to this church. They've served the Lord for many, many years, and and, you know, as we talk about the scripture and we see Jesus' command to, to let water baptism be an outward profession of our commitment to Christ, I'm, I'm inspired by uh, people that would say, I want to do everything that the Lord commands in his word. And so as, as we talked about scripture and, and they prayed, they said, you know what, we want to step into the waters of baptism, even though we've known the Lord for all this time. And I'm so grateful for the step they're taking today. Watch these testimonies. Hello, fellow Christians. My name is James Martin. I am here today to be baptized. I was baptized as an infant and brought up in the church and confirmed. I am married to Carol Martin. When I met my wife, I really got better at following Christ and being a follower of my Lord. I am being submerged today for baptism to reconfirm my faith in Christ. I would like to thank all my friends and my family for the support they have given me over the years. I am James Martin and I have decided to follow Jesus. Carol Martin. I'm married to Jim. I have a son and a daughter and three grandchildren. I was baptized as an infant. I was confirmed as a teenager. I have never had a conversion because my heart always belonged to God. I am being reaffirming my faith because uh, I feel like I want to recommit. It, since I've come to the church, I feel closer to God. I would like to thank my family and my friends for all the times they have helped us through. 
difficult times. And I'd like to thank Pastor Aaron, Pastor Chris, and the Fellowship of uh, Assembly of God for making me feel so loved and supported here. My name is Carol Martin, and I decided to follow Jesus. Amen. of faith and your commitment to follow Jesus all the days of your life. It's my privilege today to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Courtney's coming to join me now. Hello, my name is Courtney Bentley and I'm 19 years old. I was baptized at a very young age, but looking back on it now, I decided that that was actually ultimately my parents' decision, which made me lead to making my own decision today to rededicate my life to Jesus by being baptized. Growing up, I had always known God. I had always had him at the center of my life, but it seemed like it wasn't as much as it should be. I would attend Sunday school regularly but I wouldn't go to the Sunday church services. In fact, once I became too old for Sunday school, I found myself putting Jesus at the back burner of my life. In 2014, I completely lost sight of Jesus when both my grandparents were diagnosed with cancer. And it wasn't until they passed away in 2014 and 2015 that I completely lost sight of Jesus. I was just full of so much anger and confusion and wondered what God's plan would be if it contained this much heartbreak. It took a few months after this until I heard a calling to start to put Jesus at the forefront of my life again. But this calling not only came from Jesus, but it came from a youth leader at my old church. She had signed me up for a youth event without my understanding and told me later on that I was going. And it was at this youth event that I decided I really needed Jesus in my life because he brought so much more peace and happiness, which is especially good now that I'm in college. In fact, I'm going through college following the career path that I feel Jesus pulling me towards, and that career path is teaching with a little bit of ministry. And it wasn't until I visited Wrightsville in 2017 that I've been fully expanding my faith by putting my full trust in Jesus and putting him at the center of my life I would like to thank my family for introducing me to Jesus and allowing me to attend youth events. I would also like to thank my church family, especially Vicki and Charlie, because they're the ones that brought me here and continue to be by my side through this journey. And I would like to thank my best friend Jordan for being the person for in to instantly want to talk about my faith with me, no matter what time of day it is. Without all their support, I do not think I'd be so open and willing to expand my faith and live my life for Jesus. My name is Courtney Bedley, and I have decided to follow Jesus. Wow. So awesome. So awesome. All right, you stand up here. Okay with me? Courtney, I love that you said you're not just giving your heart to Jesus, but you're committed to serve him with your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, and obey his call for your life. Because of that profession of faith in Jesus, it's my privilege today to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm Olivia Hawk. I'm 12 years old and I'm here to be baptized. I want to be baptized because I've had like a short lifespan so far because I'm only 12. And I just want to see, if I do this now, I want to see what God will have in store for me as I grow older and what he's going to do for me when I'm older. <laughs> I grew up in a more traditional church and then for a while, I started like drifting away from church because that wasn't really like my style. 
And so my mom, we like moved here about two years ago in Wrightsville. So she told us about Wrightsville Assembly of God like over the summer. And we started with the youth group and coming here, it helped like relive my faith. I want to thank my mom because, well, she's the one who kind of introduced me to this place. I want to thank my sister because she's the one who comes with, like, who comes here with me every day. Um, my dad, my stepmom, my stepdad, because they're all here to like help me, like, they're here to lift me up with everything else. And Pastor Chris and Pastor Aaron <laughs> and Val for filming the video. Um, I'm Olivia, and I've decided to follow Jesus. Olivia, because of your commitment to follow Jesus with all of your heart and your public confession to all your church and family today, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I decided to get baptized. <laughs> I feel like I was like Christian before I was even born because I, there was like really nothing else that I had like thought I believed in at all. I've gone to church since I was little, but like I really didn't do anything except go downstairs in a little kid room and get a thing from the treasure chest. So I didn't really like have anything to do with the church until I like got mature about what church was and not just I got bubbles from the treasure chest. I'm gonna get baptized because I did it when I was younger but I didn't have like a choice in it. My mom just said, oh, they're gonna get baptized. So I didn't have a say in it and now I have a say in it so I'm gonna do it again now that I have a say in it. So when you start, you start over. Not like start over but I can try and rethink and change without feeling bad in a way. I would like to thank my mother, Lindsay Pangburn, and my grandmother, Sue Grophy. They were the main reason I went to church almost every Sunday that I could or got involved in my old church's uh, vacation Bible school. and actually like did stuff with church other than say oh I'm Christian and then I ever go to church ever so I am Aubrey Hawk and I have decided to follow Jesus Aubrey because of your profession of faith in Jesus and your commitment I love that you said I can change that's the power of the gospel. And because of your belief in Jesus as your Lord, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's hot. Amen. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on, we can do a little better than that. Let's stand up and give God praise one more time. Well, that was awesome. Let's give him praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for new life. Let's just praise and worship him this morning. He's so good. Fight 
everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch. And I will watch the darkness flee. Yeah. I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of the mystery. Hold on me the 
are the one who holds us. We look to you. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you.
Father, where we, we may not have seen it in that moment, Lord, going through different things, different storms, God, you were there, Father. We thank you, God, that you are our redeemer, that you are our savior, Father, that you have pulled us out of the miry pit, Father, and you have set our feet upon solid ground, Jesus. We thank you this morning, Father, for saving us, Jesus. Thank you for forgiving us this morning, Father. Thank you for new life in you, Jesus. We praise you that the old is gone and that the new has come. Hallelujah. We give you thanks this morning, Father. You are good. We thank you that you left the 99 to come and find each and every one of us, Father. You love us that much. We praise you this morning, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen. Before you're seated, turn and give somebody a hug, a high five a fist bump. We'll go ahead and dismiss our kids here this morning if they can if they can head back out. Isn't this an awesome morning so far? Woo! Damn, my wife is happy. Is somebody else here happy? <laughs> yeah. And thank God for the next generation that is just rising up in this church. Yeah, that they get to. Hey, bud. Hey, you got your dollar. My son has a dollar. <laughs> um I just want to just take a moment, though, if you are new here with us this morning and maybe you're just coming to to check out somebody or you came to support somebody, we just want to thank you. We want to honor you. This is an awesome morning with all the baptisms and soon-to-be members and child dedications and things like that, but I just want to encourage you just for a moment. If you look in the backs of the seats there, we have connect cards in the backs of the seats. Some of you will see those orange cards in the backs of the seats. It's a connect card. We want to encourage you to fill one of those out. And if you'd fill one of those out, we actually have a a little gift that we'll put up here on the screen for you. A little gift that we'll put up on the screen here for you. Yeah. So we we just have that for you this morning. Just to thank you for being a part of it this morning. And we're not going to sell your information. We're not going to put it on the internet, okay? It's safe with us. But we just are so excited that you decided to be a part of all this with us. And speaking of the dollar that my... My son was pulling out of his pocket. It's actually our time of giving here in the church. And so maybe you came prepared to give this morning and 
or maybe you didn't, and that, that's okay as well. Maybe you're a guest with us. There's no compulsion on you to give. Uh, but I was actually encouraged by my son yesterday because he took one of his dollar bills, and I heard him get out his little scissors. Yeah. And he started snipping, snipping, and I got, I got some, Gray, what are you doing? I ran into the living room, right, and I find, I find him, and thank goodness the, the, the money was laying next to him, right? But over here, he was making paper money. So, whoo, you know, but, but it made me think about that, that thing. You know, for him, even if he cut up that dollar bill, for him, it's just paper, right? What, what is it inside of me that goes, oh, no, a dollar bill, right, and, and gets so freaked out? But I, I think, yeah, but I, I think a lot of us are that way. When it comes to the realm of our finances, sometimes we're concerned about what, what's happening to it, where's it going to go, and all those things. You know, the Bible says that we store up treasures in heaven where moth and rust, nothing can get after that. And sometimes you read verses like that and you go, well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. What am I supposed to do? Just keep throwing it up towards the sky, right? No. What you do is you invest it into the kingdom of God. See, what we just saw here this morning is because of the investment of a generation before us. What we have here today, which is being worked on and creating new life, this has been provided for by a generation that's come before us. And so our generation, yes, our generation, there's a lot represented here. We have the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God and to see more testimonies just like this. So I wanna encourage you this morning, maybe you came prepared to give with your usual tithe and offering, and. Maybe you just came in and God's just pulling at your heartstrings. I just want to take a moment and pray over you and pray over the finance of this church that we would continue to see harvest. Because what we're doing is we're sowing into the kingdom. And we will see a harvest. God promises that. So I want to pray for you here this morning. God, we just thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness and all that we've seen already here this morning. God, I pray that you would bless and multiply, Lord, what we are sowing here today, that we may see continued testimonies of your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord. We know who you are, and we know who you've called us to be. So, Lord, as the people of God, we, we sow knowing that it's you that brings the increase. We may water, Lord. We may fertilize, but, God, you bring the increase because it all comes from you. So, God, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Good morning, church. How are you guys doing today? Uh, I didn't, you didn't sell me too much on that one. I said, how are you doing today? Amen, amen. Today I have a couple announcements. So first, let me start off by saying we are so glad you are here. Aren't you being blessed by these testimonies? The first announcement I have for you guys are these shirts. These are pretty cool. I mean, look at the back, too. These are really cool, and they're on sale for $10, so get yours by next Sunday. Everybody say with me, next Sunday. Yes, and we will be wearing them to Fall Fest. Who knows what Fall Fest is? Yeah, last year we had 1,000 people come, and we are expecting more. Amen? So you can help us out by signing up in the Info Center but we need your help to get candy, bags of candy. There is a box in the lobby and we need you guys to fill it up so that we can provide candy and stuff for the kids, amen? There's more events to come, amen? Aren't we glad you, we love to serve? We're a church of serving, amen? So you can check out these bulletins and to check out the things. I always put this on my refrigerator because I forget stuff, amen? So make sure you get yours today so you keep up to date. Thank you, church. You have a good morning. Amen. Thank you, Alicia. I had no doubt she was going to bring some energy when she stepped up on this platform. Never questioned it. Hey, I want to do something really special this morning as we're celebrating uh, the things that God's doing in the church. One of the things that's pretty significant to us is, uh, is our membership as a church. You know, the Bible speaks about what, uh, what it means to be a part of the family of God. How many of you understand that when you get uh, saved and called into a relationship with God, you get his family too? Amen. And so every believer 
in every, in every nation, in, in every nationality, is a part of the capital C church. Jesus is coming back for his church, amen? The church is the bride of Christ. And I mean, I'm glad you have a personal relationship with him, but he's coming back for a church. So there's something corporate that Jesus is all about. And, uh, and so today, we're going to be recognizing new members in just a few moments that have decided they're going to be a part of the local church, and they're going to make a public commitment to that. Uh, before we do that, we're going to do something else that is a personal commitment, but it does have a, an application to us as a church body because we're all a part of what God's doing in the work. And so right now, I'm going to ask a couple families to come, and uh, they're going to be making a, a personal commitment today as they dedicate their children to the Lord. I want to invite Stephan and Carolyn uh, Albright to come. They're uh, bringing Kai Xavier and Adrian Simone. And did she go to get Brendan? Yeah, come on up this way, guys. How's it going, Kai? Good to see you, buddy. Great to see you this morning. Carolyn's coming with Brendan. And I also want to ask, if you can help up those stairs, I want to ask Josh and Lindsay Pangburn this morning to join me with Avery Elizabeth. Amen. Yeah, yeah, why don't we come to this side of the stage that way? Come on up here. All right. Great to see you this morning. Good morning. Now, aren't these two beautiful families? Amen. Wow. The kids are already checked in for kids' church. We, we got to speed this up. They're missing out on their, their program upstairs. Uh, I want to share a scripture with you today as, as we get ready to pray over you and, uh, and just have a moment of commitment. You know, the Bible says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verse 15 and 16, it says, people were bringing babies to Jesus, other translations say children, to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. How many of you know sometimes the people of God can be out of step with Jesus? <laughs> they were totally on a different page. The disciples rebuked them for bringing the children to Jesus and interrupting the busy stuff they had to do. It says, but Jesus called the children to him, and he said, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I just want to say to all of us, and to you parents especially, that the kingdom of God is wide open to kids. The kingdom of God is for our children. Jesus said it belongs to them. And we have a responsibility as parents to, to do what these parents did, to bring our children to Jesus. Now, uh, no parent sets out and says, I want to limit my kids but oftentimes, I've seen parents hinder. How do we hinder? We hinder our kids by not recognizing the responsibility that we have as the priest of our home. The Bible calls Christians the royal priesthood. In other words, we don't live under the Old Testament where only certain people have access to God. We're the priests of our home. We lead our families into God's presence. We pray for our families. We, we're the spiritual leaders in our family. You know, I've seen uh, parents that, that, that would never consider uh, letting their kids quit school because that would, that would have a, a grave effect on their future academically. And, and, and we care for our kids uh, mentally and physically and even socially right up until the time they leave the nest. But how many times have we seen families that have neglected their responsibility to foster their kids' well-being spiritually? Come on, I, I don't know about you, but when I grew up, like, you know, going... Going to school was never an option. It wasn't something we discussed on Monday morning. It was get out of bed. Get out, you know. and, and I'm so thankful that when I grew up, I had a drug problem. I'm thankful my parents drug me to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. <laughs> you know, it wasn't a discussion on the weekend either. My family lived by that verse, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And these parents today are making a commitment to say, as much as it is up to us, we're going to raise our kids, not only socially and physically and, 
and, and mentally, but spiritually. We're going to lead our children to Jesus so that they can be everything that God has called them to be. And so really, uh, I'm going to lead you in a, just a vow, and it's really a parental vow. I, I pray that every one of your kids one day are going to, uh, well, I haven't picked up one of these in a while. Man, whew. It, one day, your kids are going to make their own decision to follow those this morning in water baptism, and they'll make their own public profession of faith. But, uh, but today is about the parents saying, I'm making a commitment. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And so I, I want to lead you in, in, a, in a vow today, and I just want you to respond and say we do to each of these statements. Parents, do you come professing Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your lives? And do you come to dedicate yourselves to the biblical instruction, discipline, and love of your children? And do you come to dedicate your children into the ultimate control and will of God through the Lord Jesus? So I have a charge for the church today as well. Do you, church, agree to support these parents by your example and through acts of service? And do you agree to reinforce the biblical instruction, discipline, and love that these children will receive under the supreme rule of the Lord Jesus Christ? If so, say we will. Yes. Amen. Uh, is there any extended family that's here uh, today with, with the Albrights? Do you guys have any other family? Okay. Anyone here with the, the pain burns? I just want to recognize you. Would you just right where you're at, would you stand, all of you guys, that whole row that's there? And praise God for you guys. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask, thank you guys. You can be seated. I'm going to ask Pastor Chris to join me up here. And uh, yeah, you can just set that stuff down for a moment. We're going to just take a moment, church, right where you're sitting. I'm going to have you stretch your hands towards these family. And we're just going to anoint these precious children with oil. Pastor Chris, I'm going to give you the oil here. And uh, let's just pray. We're going to agree together today for God's blessing over little Avery. Did we already put that picture up there of Avery? We have that man. I, I, that's a beautiful picture. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. What a doll. Well, I, I, won't, I won't fault you if you pray with your eyes open, but <laughs> let's pray together. Father, we thank you today for your calling and for your plan on Avery's life. God, thank you, Lord, that uh, your word says even before uh, she was in the womb, Lord, you foreknew her. You had a plan and a purpose for her life. So God, I just pray today for Josh, I pray for Lindsay, God, I pray for their family, that you would help them, Lord, by your Holy Spirit to, to create an atmosphere, Lord, that would be an incubator for faith, for a relationship with Jesus Christ to be known and to grow and to, to have deep roots. God, we just thank you. And Lord, we stand in agreement with this family today as they as they commit her to you, Lord, it's this acknowledgement that, God, she was yours first. And so, Lord, we trust you. You're the good, good father that loves and has a perfect plan for your children. And so, Lord, we thank you for your anointing and grace upon her life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What, what incredibly well-behaved children we have up here this morning. It's so quiet. It's, it's almost alarming. It is. He's reminding me. The longer you go, the, the thinner the ice gets. So uh, l let's pray today for the Albright family. Would you just stretch your hands towards this, this family as we're going to pray over them? And Pastor Chris is going to anoint them. What a beautiful picture up there. Awesome. Father God, today we just come in agreement, Lord, right now with Stephan and with Carolyn, Lord, for their family. Lord, we just honor them for this commitment to to stand publicly before the people of God and say, Lord, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So, God, we thank you for the plan and the purpose you have for Kai. Lord, as he's the, the oldest and the firstborn, Lord, we pray your blessing would be on him, that he would be a mighty man of God, that he would be confident in who you say he is, and that, Lord, he would be an incredible example to his younger sister and brother. Lord, we just thank you for your plan and purpose for him. And for Adrian, Lord, we just thank you for, Lord, her precious life. God, that she is fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. Lord, may she know that full well. May she never question, Lord, 
that. Lord, thank you for the plan and the purpose that you have for her life. And Lord, for Brendan, Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for uh, the calling and the purpose that you've placed upon him. Lord, thank you for let your will be done in his life, Lord, from an early age. God, we just thank you for your plan and purpose. God, we pray and we come in agreement with Stephan and Carolyn. Lord, meet every need they have. Give them wisdom. And Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence. Lord, not just here in the church house, but God in their home. Lord, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Yeah. So we, we do have a gift. We want to give you guys just a little Bible there and a certificate uh, to commemorate today for little Avery and then also for the Albrights. We've got a Bible now. Ty, we had to get a little bigger one for you. We didn't think you'd want the little one. But that's for you, buddy. And uh, so, yeah, you can, you can break that thing open when you get up to kids' church upstairs. One more time, can we just thank these families for coming today? Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, well, praise God. I, I want to uh, do something, as I mentioned a moment ago, that is, uh, that is something for the whole body. Thank you, sir. We've got several members that are coming today uh, to, to be recognized in front of the church, and uh, some in this service, some in the next service, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read off all of these names, and it, as I say your name, if you would come, if you have uh, your family with you, your kids with you, they can come as well. Uh, and just stand here in front of the altar and face me. I want to invite Nate and Melissa Graham to come this morning. And yeah, I want to invite Jim and Carol Martin to come today. And uh, Sherry Fritz is coming this morning. JT and Rochelle Gill are coming this morning. And then Stephen and Carolyn Albright are coming back down this morning. Tori is coming this morning. Awesome. Yeah, you guys could just stand across the front here. and If you would, just turn and face me for a few moments. I want to ask if any of the advisory committee is, is here in the service this morning. I know some are going to be in the second service, some are serving, but if any of our advisory committee is here this morning, could you come and just uh, stand here behind these folks? Pastor Chris, would you come? We just want to, just to symbolically back you up here today. Today we're going uh, to pray over these new members. And, and as I, I look this morning at, at all these that are standing in front of me, um, I just get excited in my spirit because uh, I, I see a bunch of people that, uh, that have already committed to what God is doing in this church. They're already adding life. They're adding value to what God's doing in this church. And when you look at membership in the Bible, uh, you don't uh, see a, a pattern for this type of a moment of necessarily uh, saying, you know, you're a member, you're not a member. What we actually see is that church membership is biblical Christianity. It's just biblical Christianity. Uh, but as a church, as a local church, uh, we value the insight, not, not just somebody belonging to say, I'm a part of what you're doing, but when somebody becomes a member, it's our opportunity to say, we're a part of what God's doing in you. And we're, we want to be a part of not just uh, depositing a word from the Spirit of God in your life, but we trust the Holy Spirit in your life. And we want God to use you to bless the church. And so I get so excited when, when people join the church because I recognize that each and every one of us, we have unique giftings from God. And there's unique expressions of the grace of God right here. And so, so the church becomes a more beautiful and, and kaleidoscopic reflection of the glory of God, the more diverse it is in its giftings. And so I thank God for the uniqueness in each and every one of your lives and that God has brought you here in this season. So what I want to do today is we're going to pray for you, but uh, I have a book that we give out as a gift uh, to to members of the church. It was written by Thomas Rayner several years ago, and, uh, and it just speaks about what biblical church membership looks like. 
I want to read a little, uh, a few statements from the back of the book, and we're just going to respond. Uh, the response will be, I am a church member. And so what I want to ask is, if you're a church member this morning, I want you to join us in making these declarations together, all right? So we're going we're gonna to do the practice run. When I lift my hand, everybody's just going to say, I am a church member. Are you ready? I like the metaphor of membership. It's not membership as in a civic organization or a country club. It's the kind of membership that is given to us in 1 Corinthians 12. that says, now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. Because I am a member of the body of Christ, I must be a functioning member. Whether I am an eye, an ear, a hand, as a functioning member, I will give. I will serve. I will minister. I will evangelize, I will study, I will seek to be a blessing to others. I will remember that if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it, and if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. I am a church member. I will seek to be a source of unity in the church. I know there's no perfect pastors, staff, or church members, but neither am I. And so I'll not be a source of gossip or dissension. One of the greatest contributions that I can make is to do all that I can in God's power to help keep the church in unity for the sake of the gospel. I am a church member. I will not let my church be about my preferences or desires. That is self-serving. I'm in the church to serve others and to serve Christ my Lord. My Savior went to the cross for me. I can deal with any inconveniences and matters that might not be my preference or style. I am a church member. I'll pray for my pastors. My pastors can't serve our church in their own power, so I'll commit to pray for God's strength for them and their families. I am a church member. I'll lead my family to be good members of this church as well. We'll pray together for our church. We'll worship together in our church. We'll serve together in our church. And we will ask Christ to help us fall deeper in love with this church. Because he gave his life for her. I am a church member. This membership is a gift. When I received the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, I became a part of the body of Christ. I soon thereafter identified with a local body. I was baptized. And now, I'm humbled and I'm honored to serve and to love others in our church. I pray that I will never take membership for granted, but see it as a gift and an opportunity to serve others and to be a part of something so much greater than any one person or member. I am a church member, and we are so glad that you are. I want to ask the church if you'd stand with me one more time today, and let's just stretch our hands towards these. I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to church to pray. Lift your voice with me. Father, thank you so much for the work that you're doing in the life of Wrightsville Assembly of God. It's a direct result of the work that you're doing in the individual hearts and lives of these family members. God, thank you for their gifts. Thank you for the gospel that saved them and redeemed them and washed them in the blood of Jesus. Thank you that, Lord God, their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and that the church, this local church, is the expression of heaven in the earth. So God, we covet the opportunity to be in membership, in partnership, in covenant relationship together. Lord, may their faith thrive in this church. God, may we be blessed even more because of their commitment to your heart and to your house. So Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise for every one of them in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Can we give God praise one more time? Amen. Amen. Now, if you don't know these folks, I, I want to challenge you to, to find some of them before you leave church today. Personally, shake their hand, greet somebody, let them know you're glad to have them in the family of God. We love you guys. Thank you so much. You can be seated. Thank you guys for joining us this morning up here. I'll trade you books. It's a good one, but I'd rather preach from that one. 
today, I want to take uh, some time, uh, the time that we have left, and I just want to turn your heart to the Word uh, for a few moments. In fact, I want to let you just uh, watch this as we get ready to introduce something new today. That's the intro that many of us will be watching in homes over the next uh, several weeks because today we are uh, releasing our new life group series to all of our life groups. And we're so excited. Pastor Chris just ran and got one for me. This is what the packets look like. And uh, so many of our life group leaders, you've already signed up to lead or host a group. And, uh, and so you've been waiting for this to be put in your hands it's got a DVD in it, and on the DVD are uh, five separate sessions of short conversations that Pastor Chris and I had on these topics. We sat down in front of the camera uh, over a month ago, and, and uh, our life groups will be sitting down, putting the DVD in, watching the, the introduction to the conversation, and then opening up uh, the floor for their life group to have a conversation also in here is a life group leader's book. It looks just like this. And it's got a guide in it to facilitate those conversations. And so I want to just take a moment to encourage you, if if you uh, haven't signed up for a life group, there are uh, some cards that we have. Uh, We have a stack of them out there at the Info Center that you can just fill out a card and say, I'm interested in joining a group. Now, we haven't set a time or a day that these groups have to meet. We want it to to be spearheaded by the life leaders. So if you say, I'd like to be a part of a group, and, uh, and, but I, I, can't, you know, I, I can't meet on Sunday night or I can't meet on Friday night, uh, we want to try to help you to get into a group and when it works. So that's what those cards are for. But I want to just go a step farther today. You know, we've done all of the work in advance to make this uh, an incredible opportunity for us to just connect. How many of you were here last Sunday for Life Group Live when we did that service? Wasn't that fun? I had, I had a couch up here, and I had uh, s- several friends join me, and we did a little mock life group right here. And, and it just never ceases to amaze me how, how God can just open up avenues and opportunities for ministry and encouragement to one another when we turn the rows into circles. When we just decide that being a part of the body of Christ is more than filling a weekend time slot. Now listen, I said this last week, I'm going to say it again. I believe in the power of a moment. I believe God can do something in a Sunday morning time slot that could radically change your life for the rest of your life. So I don't say this to discredit what God wants to do in church on the weekend. But there's something that Jesus is calling us to. And it's relationships, it's discipleship. And so I want to push a little farther than saying join a group. Maybe, maybe you've heard us talk about this and, and now you're seeing the materials that are available today and, and the DVDs. And maybe you're here and you say, you know what, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to put a group together. I got several friends that, that I could invite over to my house. And again, there's five sessions. Uh, the video content is, is less than 30 minutes. Um, and so however you set that group up is up to you. I, I'm going to be hosting a group of young adults, we're going to be starting next Sunday. And so our group's meeting Sunday night, and we're going to come together and probably eat some unhealthy snacks and uh, just hang out and have a good time, put the DVD in, and then we're going to just walk through the discussion guide, and we're going to build relationship. And we're not going to build relationship for five weeks. We're going to build it for six weeks. Usually we do these as six-week series, but we decided to make it a five-week series for a reason. We want to encourage all of our life groups to go ahead and plan six weeks. And then on that sixth one, and now, now for some of you this is going to be hard, but uh, listen, I don't want you to do anything with the material. On the sixth one, I just want you to get together one more time to just hang out. By that time, you'll know each other a little better. Uh, conversation will be a lot easier. And you can just pray for one another. You can encourage one another. But that sixth week is just going to be a chance to get together and hang out. 
Now, we could spend all morning, Pastor Chris and I, talking about the different people that we've talked with. And, and, and I know the feeling, especially when you haven't been in a church for very long. The feeling is everybody else is connected and I'm not. Can I just tell you today, there's a lot of people that are in that very same place. And so we're doing everything that we can to try to connect the pieces. But I want to just encourage you today. Maybe you're here and you go, you know what, I should, I should lead a group. I should host a group. And we want to get the information in your hand. You can do that. Again, life groups are start. Some are starting today. Anybody got a life group starting today? Anybody? Awesome. Yeah, they got one starting today. They got one starting today. Uh, several are starting today. And, and over the next several days and weeks, we're going to get these started. So just want to let you know that's here. Thank you, Pastor Chris. So grateful for Pastor Chris and Val. Uh, our team puts all that together and does an incredible job. Today, I want to challenge you with one thought. And the thought is vision. I want to speak about vision for just a minute because if we're going to go above and beyond where we've ever been and what we've known and experienced up to this point in our life, how many of you know it's going to require that we have a vision of where we're going? You have to be able to, to see where you're going. It was at Rice University that President Kennedy made a speech on September 12th in 1962 and he cast a vision for America to put men on the moon. I won't ask who remembers that, but it, it wasn't too long ago that that happened. And he cast a vision that day. Now, it was going to take a whole lot of manpower. It was going to take a lot of time. It was going to take a whole lot of money. But it had to begin with a vision. It had to begin with somebody saying, this is what we're going to do. Helen Keller was asked one time, what could be worse than being blind? You know what she said? Having sight with no vision. So, President Kennedy, the vision was, we're going to the moon. What's your moonshot? What is it that, that you have a vision for that, that is up to this point been unattainable, been outside of your reach, been maybe just something that you hoped for or thought about or dreamed about, but what is it that you would really love to see God do in your life? What is it you'd like to see God take you to? What is it that you see when you close your eyes? What's your moonshot? And let me ask you more specifically, what, what's your moonshot for your marriage? Do you have a vision for, for what you want to see? What's your moonshot for your finances or for your children? As they grow up, as you see the next generation rise up, when you're no longer the, the young adult or the, the young parent, but now you're the grandparent or the great-grandparent, when you start to see that story play out, what's the vision? What's the legacy that outlives your life? You know, the reality is I think some of us, we're actually afraid to ask those kind of questions. I think good Christian people sometimes feel like it's almost sinful to say, what do I want? Right? Right? Because we read verses like the one, the one in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 that says the heart is deceitful above all things and it's beyond cure. Who can understand it? And we read that verse and we go, man, my heart is wicked and, and we come to the rationalization that, that if it's something that I want, it must not be of God. And so I, I'm going to have to, if I'm going to follow Jesus and I'm going to be a good Christian, I'm going to actually have to run away from the things that would make me happy. No wonder we got so many sad Christians out there, right? I mean, right? You've met them, right? I don't, I don't remember what church they go to, but I've met them. They're miserable. And you would think that, like, you know, I'm, I'm more spiritual if I don't do the things that I really have a passion and a desire to do. And, and we, we come up with this rationale because our, our, heart is, our heart is wicked, and so we better run from our own desires. Well, let me just tell you this one. It is true that a sinful heart is a deceitful heart. That's why Jesus never said to a group of sinners, follow your heart. He said, follow me. Don't follow your heart. Follow me. But what about those that have decided to follow him? What about those who have found new life? What about those who have committed their heart, soul, mind, and strength to the purpose and the plan of God? Let me give you another verse. Ezekiel chapter 36 says this, I'll give you a new heart, and I'll put a new spirit in you. 
I'll remove from your, your old heart of stone, and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Listen to this. He says, and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. There's something that happens when a person gives their heart and life to Jesus. We just saw it illustrated as men and women were coming up out of the waters of baptism. There's a supernatural exchange. The old, deceitful, self-centered heart is replaced with a heart of flesh. And not only do you get a new heart at the moment of salvation, he says, I put my spirit in you, and that spirit will move you. And so when you have a new heart, and God has changed your life, that means you can have confidence in promises like this one. The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 4, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. God actually wants to give you your heart's desire. See, the key to it is the priority of it. Delight yourself in the Lord. If the Lord is your delight, if you're taking delight in Him, then your heart has His Spirit in you. His Spirit is teaching you how to move and to obey His commands. The old selfish heart is gone. The new heart has come. And so let me give you a loose interpretation of that verse, but I think it's a good one. Let me read it again. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know what I think that means? Fall madly in love with Jesus, and then do what you want. Now, don't don't hear me wrong. Don't just go doing what you want and spend your life asking God to bless your plans, because he's already blessed his plans. But if you'll fall madly in love with Jesus... If he's the priority of your heart, of your life, if every breath that he's given you, you give back to him in praise. If your chief ambition is his glory, then you can go after your heart's desire. You can go after your dreams and your ambitions. When Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he said this. He said, this is how you should pray, Matthew 6, 9 and 10. Our Father in heaven Hallowed be your name. Do you know what that is? That's an upward vision. That, that's perspective. Jesus says, you want to know how to approach God? And the first thing he said was our Father. Now that was revolutionary. Nobody called God Father. But Jesus was saying, you can have an intimate relationship with your Heavenly Father. But then he said, not only our Father, he said, you are in heaven. That's perspective on where God is and where I am and who's got the throne and who doesn't. But then he goes a little farther and he says, hallowed be your name. That's a statement of reverence to say, God, you're holy. You're holy. And God, I recognize your authority in my life. That's not just the the first thing that we pray. It's also the priority of our relationship. And Jesus was saying this, when you approach God, is the priority of your relationship. That he's our father, he's in heaven, and holy is his name. And then you know what he said next. He said, your kingdom come and your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. See, that's the response of a person that has an upward vision. That's that's the response of a person that recognizes that that God is God, that I'm not, that, that he's holy and he's up there and I'm down here, but he's my father and I have an intimate relationship with him. And a person that knows that knows that every area of my life that is not in alignment with the purpose and the plan of God has to come in alignment. And so not my will, but yours be done. I want what you want for me. And it's more than just saying, I want to honor and, 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 and please my Father. It's saying, I recognize that because you are my Father, and because you're infinitely good, that the plan you have for me is the better plan. And so when I surrender to the plan of God and the vision of God for my life, I lose nothing. And that's the lie that the enemy's told too many people. You don't want to get a vision from God. You think his plan's less than your plan. You think you know the best life. You don't know your best life. He created you with the best life in mind for you. And so when we come under his lordship and we get an upward vision, all of a sudden, Jesus said later in that same chapter, Matthew 6, 33, he said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Again, he's talking about the priority of your life. Get God first in your priorities and all these other things. 
They're going to be added to you. You want to see God move above and beyond in your life? Then you got to get a vision. What's your moonshot? What's the thing that you would just hope and desire to see God do in and through your life? See, whenever your heart is fully surrendered to the Lord, His vision is planted like a seed inside of you. That's why when I pray over my kids at night, oftentimes I don't pray that God gives them good, I don't pray that they have good dreams. I mean, good dreams are better than bad dreams, but I pray that they have God dreams. Because I don't want them to feel like they have to sacrifice the desires of their heart to honor God, when in reality, God puts his desires in seed form in the hearts of his children, and they grow up and say, this is what I want to do. Can I tell you today, I'm doing what I want to do. I love being in the ministry. I love giving my life to this church. I love serving you as your pastor. This is, this is not drudgery for me. This is not my cross to bear. This is my calling. This is my purpose. This is why there's breath in my lungs this morning. What's your moonshot? And I know that God has a plan and a purpose for my children. And so I say, God, give them God dreams. I don't care what it is. Maybe they'll be a lawyer or a doctor or, or a baker or, I, I don't, or a cookie maker. I don't know what they'll do. But, but I want them to say, oh, I want to do this to the glory of God all the days of my life. I want him to be glorified through me. I, w- I want to give you a verse out of the message translation. I, I just think the way Eugene Peterson puts this verse is so powerful. So it's up on the screen. Look at this. This is Ephesians 1, 11 and 12. It says, it's in Christ we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Can you picture that? He's got the blueprint spread out. Long before you were thinking about God, he had designs on you for glorious living. Part of the overall purpose that he is working out in everything and in every one. What a thought. Long before we were seeking God. Long before we we wanted to please him. He had a, a, a plan in place for a glorious life that would bring you rich and deep satisfaction and would bring him glory. Jesus said, here's the MO of the devil. John 10 and 10. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then he said... But I have come that you may have life to the fullest. That's what Jesus wants for us. That full life is deposited as a seed in your heart. See, a vision is just a preferred future. That's what a vision is. A vision is a picture of a preferred future. What do you see? What's your moonshot? Let me tell you quickly, secondly, we need eyes of faith if we're going to see the vision. You need eyes of faith to see the above and beyond that God has for you. Every one of us has a cynic in the back of our minds. Every one of us has a critic. Every one of us has a voice that wants to discredit you, count you out. You're You're not alone in that. We've all heard it a thousand times. Some of us, we hear it in different areas of our lives than others. For some of us, it has to do with your your, uh, physical expression. And you just never, you never feel good enough. You never look good enough. And for others of you, it's, it's relationships. Or for some of us, it's about our past and where we came from. And, and for some of us, it's about the mistakes that we've made. But that voice is always there. And if you're going to see the above and beyond that God's calling, to, calling you to, you have to have eyes of faith. I love the story in, in Joshua chapter 6. It's the story of the battle of Jericho. But it, it begins, chapter 1, with this. It says, now... The gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. So that's, that's reality. The city is shut tight. No one goes out, no one comes in. But then the next verse, it says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I've delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its kings and with its fighting men. He said, See, do you see it? And in the flesh, you know, Joshua's going, no, I don't see it. I I see what, the the gates are shut and the bars are locked and nobody goes out, nobody comes in. That's what I see. And God's saying, I don't want you to look with eyes of the flesh. I want you to look with eyes of faith. 
I want you to see what I see for you. I want you to see beyond the natural. I want you to see that I've already given you the city, though you haven't taken one step in the battle. Can anybody see that this morning? With eyes of faith. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. I I remember when God gave me a vision for the future of this church. It was the first winter that I was the pastor here. It was uh, early 2014, and one of our church members who was well-loved in this church and in this community uh, died, and I did Ruby Yoakum's funeral, and when we did that funeral that day, this place was packed out. In fact, uh, one of our members, Ted Reigert, who's back, good to have you back, Ted and Brenda. They've been down, they've been at their beach home, so it's great to have you guys back. But he went upstairs, there used to be a, a window up there where that video screen is, and, uh, and he, took, he took a picture, I want to show it to you. And that was at the funeral service that day, and I'm glad you took that picture, Ted, because uh, while the parking lot was filling up, and the streets were filling up, and... Uh, People just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. We hadn't seen anywhere near 200 people in our sanctuary before. But that day, God began to unfold clarity about a vision. See, I I knew God wanted this church to be healthy. And I know that usually healthy things grow. But I didn't know what it was going to look like. You know, so when things start to grow, you just start going, oh, this is exciting. Just do more, do more. But all of a sudden, I had a clarifying moment. God spoke vision to me because I, I realized that, well, you know, every preacher likes a full house. That was not sustainable. I mean, that was chaos. I mean, there was no parking for everybody. And we were out of parking spots and toilet seats really quick. And I realized that's like 200 adults in the sanctuary. And that's a funeral. There's hardly any kids here. If we had 200 adults in the sanctuary on a Sunday, looking at the demographics of our church, that means we're going to have over 40 kids. Wow, we don't have enough nursery space for that. We don't have enough preschool space. We don't have enough kids' church space for that. So I started looking at the implications of of that kind of growth, and, and God began to clarify vision for me. Really early on, right then, I understood that 200 people, though we could fit that man in here, and it was exciting to look at 200 faces, I realized that's not the goal. That's not sustainable. In fact, the threshold in this room is, is 150, because once we, once we reach that threshold, though we could still put, fit more people in, we don't have room for more kids, we don't have room in the bathrooms, and, and, and so God began to show me right then that this church is going to be healthy and it's going to grow, and, and, and it's not a goal of packing hundreds and hundreds of people in here, it's going to be... It's going to be multiple services. It's going to be 350 people in three weekend services. And God began to clarify in my heart in early 2014 what that was going to look like. And what a vision does, is all, it brings clarity. All of a sudden, well, we, we know the mission. The mission never changed from where they are to where God wants them to be. But what's that going to look like? And so we began to put the pieces in place, and we're not, we're not everywhere God's taking us, but praise God, he's building the church, amen? He's growing the church, and, and, and we're, we're moving towards that vision that one of these days, not a doubt in my mind, we'll have 350 people worshiping here every weekend in a community of less than 2,200 in three different services. And there's so much tied to that. I mean, there's, there's, there's missions tied to that. There's ministries yet to be launched that are, that are tied to that. That's not just some abstract thought. There's, there's financial uh, goals that are, that are tied to that. There, there's things that God is going to do in and through this church. And, and there's a vision, though, that God had to give me to see how it is even possible. See, God is not stressed out about your limitations at all. No, in fact, the, the first thing that God did when he began to create the heavens and the earth was he created limitations. He put some parameters. He put some borders in place. God thrives in limitations. I mean, I know it, it's, it's kind of popular to say think outside the box, but hey, I think God can do a whole lot with the situation you got. So let's just allow the Holy Spirit to birth vision in your heart and in your life for what he wants to do because vision makes things clear 
and clarifying, and it, and it tells you what you're moving towards, and it helps to tell you what you're not. But you have to have eyes of faith to see what God wants to do if you're going to go above and beyond. The last thing I want to say to you, and then I'm, I want to pray today. In fact, I'm going to ask the worship team if you'll come back and just play that song that you were singing earlier, God, I look to you. I, I love in the story of Joshua and the children of Israel, you know, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 34 that uh, Moses, he was this incredible leader, but he died. It says in verse 8, it says, the Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. For 30 days, they just lamented over the loss of their great leader, Moses. And then down in verse 12, it says this about Moses. It says, for no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of Israel. Nobody had ever done anything like that before. And the temptation was to become paralyzed. The temptation was to go, well, Moses, I mean, he's, he's once in a lifetime. He's once in a generation. I mean, what God did through him, that was incredible, but... We can't go any farther. That's how the chapter ends. That's how the book of Deuteronomy ends. And then you, you turn the page and you begin Joshua chapter 1. And God's saying something to us here. It says in verse 1 and 2, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. Listen to what he said. Moses, my servant, is dead. Kind of stating the obvious, isn't it? I mean, we just cried for 30 days. <laughs> like, you know, we know. But God shows up to us. And you know what he's saying? Joshua, stop looking back. Stop looking back. Because I do have a vision for you. I do have something that you're going to do. I have a place that I'm taking you to. Can I just say the one thing that every one of us have in common today? Every one of us. I don't know, I don't know your past. I don't know your goals. But here's what I know about every one of us. Not one of us can go back and change anything about yesterday. None of us can go back and change it. So if you're going to go above and beyond to what God has for you, no matter how big or small it might seem in your mind's eye right now, you have to stop looking back. You have to... Forgive the hurts of yesterday. You, you got to stop nursing the same wounds. You got to stop kicking yourself for the battles lost in the past. If you're ever going to move forward, you have, to, you have to spiritually draw a line in the sand and say, God, I'm, give me vision. Give me vision. Because God is always advancing. Never retreating. He's always moving forward. And when you give your life and your heart to Jesus, you can too. I want to challenge somebody today. You need to hear this. Stop going back. Just stop going back. For, for some, maybe your hesitation in even coming today had nothing to do with today. But when somebody invited you, you thought about a year ago or five years ago. Stop going back. There's nothing back there that can lead you into where God wants to take you. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. He's present. He's here right now. You don't go back, you don't got to go back 30 years to find healing. Healing is here. You don't have to go back 15 years to find forgiveness. Forgiveness is here. Grace is here. Mercy is here. I'm going to ask you to stand with me all over this room. Bow your head with me. Close your eyes. We're going to pray. Father, right now, Lord, you're stirring in people's hearts, Lord, a desire to know you more, a desire to, to know your will. God, you're stirring in people right now, a desire for freedom from things that they thought they'd never get away from, things they thought they'd never get over. Today, by the power of the Spirit, in Jesus' name, I release freedom in this house. 
right now, Lord, by your spirit. Lord, those that need forgiveness, God, right now, may they receive forgiveness. Just ask me if that's you, just right where you stand. In your own words, just talk to him. Say, God, I, I need your grace. I need your forgiveness. God, wash my sins away. Lord, the same way that we saw men and women and teenagers testify today by stepping into the waters. If we'll give our heart and our life to you, God, you will wash us and make us clean. God, for those that are still locked in a cage of unforgiveness, God, give them the capacity by your spirit to let go today. Give them the capacity by your spirit to forgive to walk forward into the purpose and the plan you have for their life. If this is for you today, I, I just want to ask you to respond right where you're standing. If God's speaking to your heart and saying, today, I need God to give me vision. I need God to help me to not look back and to move forward into his plan and purpose for my life. Would you just raise your hand right where you're standing? Praise God. Praise God. Just raise it up high. Come on. Just be honest with God. That's me. God, this is a new day. It's a new day. Praise God. Now, come on, would you just lift the other hand? All over this room, let's lift our hands toward God. Father, right now, Lord, we consecrate our lives to you for your plan, for your purpose for us. God, we're not going back to yesterday. Lord, we are stepping into the plan and the purpose that you have for us. God, thank you for the dreams that you're birthing in our hearts. They're from you. Lord, we want to pursue our purpose, our calling, your dream for our lives with all that we are. So give us your Holy Spirit right now. Lord, we need your Spirit's help. We know the enemy wants to pull us back, but God, by your Spirit, propel us forward to a new day above and beyond what we could ask or imagine for your glory and for your honor in our lives and in the church. Have your way, God. Would you just pray that prayer? Say, have your way in me. Have your way in me. Jesus, I give you my life. Have your way in me. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's say amen together. Amen. Let's sing this chorus one time. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God. Just declare it out loud. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Forever. Forever all my days. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. With faith. Over my situation. Hallelujah. Our my family. Come on. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Lord, we give it all to you. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Forever, Lord. Forever all my days. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, that your word declares to us in Jeremiah 29, 11. And I speak this over you today. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. There are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. There are plans to give you a hope and a future. You receive that today. Come on, let's give him praise. Lord, we receive your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As we dismiss this service today, these altars are open for prayer. If you'd like someone to pray with you, I'd encourage you. Just come and find a place here at the altar. We'll meet you here. As you head out, be sure and greet our new members. Thank you for being here this morning to all of our guests. Have a wonderful afternoon. God bless.